do something. We, we can't tell. Um, so, you know, I was thinking we should just very quickly go around and the usual say who we are and maybe a sentence. I don't, I don't think we want to do longer introductions because in a couple of months, we're going to get a whole bunch of new people on the committee. And I think at that point, we'll get together and have a meeting where we do kind of longer introductions because we're going to have five new people. We're going to wonder who they are. They're going to wonder who we are. And that just seems like the time to do it. This group, we've been around a little bit together, even if many of us have never seen each other in person. Um, so I think just a, just a quickie. So I, I will start, Matt Applebaum, Boulder, former council member, mayor of the city of Boulder. I'm Joanna Morris from kind of for Morrison area, not a former mayor, former transit and transportation planner and project manager. I'm Brandon Figliolino. He is I am the senior specialist in community engagement with RTD. Yeah. Jim Bryan, uh, I live in uh, A in uh, Eastside Denver, and uh, we're in Portland House. Uh, Travis Dewey, I come with District K for the Portland area. Uh, hoping I'm ready for that today. <laughs> uh, and I uh, previously worked on transit, mostly in Texas for uh, Transnet, for Austin, and Texas for Austin, Dallas, and Houston. Uh, now I work sort of like uh, last mile and grade and uh, package or celebrating my purchase of class. Tony Jackson, I live here in Denver. I walked over from my house. <laughs> I live near Mile High. Um, I've been on the committee, I think. Going on two years and uh, in sales, I manage a small sales team that sells equipment for other transit agencies. Right. Everyone knows now Roger Sherman, the CRL. Your consultant, he's still key. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, Jim Palmino. I'm new, uh, fairly new, I guess three or four months on, on the committee, and I'm in, uh, representing District I, and uh, uh, I think it's I. Is that I? For sure. That way. Long mark. Oh, yes. Hi. And uh, former uh, CDOT environmental planner. Yeah. Uh, Matt Frommer. Um, I live in Denver, over by the Broadway Alameda station. I think it's District A as well. Um, took the light rail up here. It was really convenient. Um, in my day job, I work for a nonprofit called SWEEP, or the Southwest Energy Efficiency Projects on transportation policy. So doing a lot of work on the legislation this year. Um, and I started last year with this group. All right, those of you calling in, uh, just in the order that you're on the screen, Stephen, you wanna start? Yeah, hey everyone, um, I'm Stephen Hebe. Um, I've been on the board since uh, last June. Uh, I am, uh, and then my district, um, I used to be out by, um, yeah, the Mile High Stadium, but now I'm over here in Five Points. Um, I believe that's B. And um, then for my line of work, I am a freelance grant writer, um, a freelancer. Joe? Uh, hi, I'm Joe Lamers. Uh, I'm in Lakewood in District M. and. Um, my occupation is ne'er do well. I mean, <laughs> you do it well. Yeah, <laughs> you can teach us. <laughs> so, uh, well, everything gets moves around, John. Uh, good afternoon. I'm John Fusa, uh, resident uh, of District G. Excuse me, in the town of Parker. Um, in my day job. Um, I'm the community development director for the town of Parker, uh, but don't hold that against me. Uh, I, I sit on this board as a resident and a, and a transit supporter um, and a uh, long history in, in uh, community, municipal and transportation planning going all the way back to New Jersey and the New York City area. And sorry, I can't join you today. I'm uh, still recuperating from COVID. Um, so nice to see everybody. Yeah, hope you're okay. Yeah, all good, thank you. Hey, Roger, could you? My hearing is so bad. Could you turn up the volume a bit? 
All right, so who we got? We got left Heather. Hi guys, sorry, I'm waiting to pick my daughter up from school. Um, Heather, Heather Britton, um, I live in Broomfield and um, just couldn't make it in person today. So probably gonna mainly see me virtually like this for a little bit. Um, I uh, live in Broomfield, my day job, I work for the city and county of Denver. Um, mainly though, I'm, a, I'm on this board because I'm just passionate about transportation. I've worked for Denver for 20 years and ridden the bus from Broomfield to, to Denver for 20 years um, until COVID. So very passionate about it. I don't really have any role in transportation though. Okay. And uh, an RTD, Barbara. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Barbara McManus, um, executive uh, manager of the RTD board office. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the agenda today is kind of mostly, I would describe it as kind of what, what What's the role of the board and how can we really do a better job? And it, it's, it's something that the previous board before I came along talked about, some of you know that, and I know you were all unhappy that this group didn't seem to be doing much of importance and the RTD board was kind of ignoring us. I, I, things have gotten better thanks to the folks who Push the issue a lot. Um, and by the time I came along, things were definitely seemingly getting better. But I think there's still a real question about, well, a couple of questions, um, some internal to us, some external. Um, the, I mean, the external is how do we better, well, what's our role really? Are, are we supposed to be, you know, just giving feedback to staff. Um, the negative way some people put it, I wouldn't quite put it this way, but you'll hear it is, you know, it's just another little box they have to check. Oh yeah, they went to the CAC check and great. Um, is it so that they'll really listen to us and, you know, take our comments and questions and and recommendations. Is it to provide recommendations to the RTD board? In which case we need to figure out a way to do that better and in a timely manner. Um, you know, who really picks the issues we work on? And then internally, I guess I'd say, how can we do a better job of, well, first of all, formulating recommendations, which we don't do very often. And that's fine. I mean, a number of our meetings really are just learning stuff. That's good. You know, city councils do the same thing. You know, usually at city councils, a good portion of your time is just learning what the heck's going on. But obviously some portion of your time is making decisions, making recommendations, asking questions, offering up your concerns and so on. And so what's the right balance for that? Um, and I guess the last question is, uh, not necessarily the last one, but pops into my mind, is are we kind of reporting in in the right place? That's come in a lot of, uh, come up a number of times. This is, since we have a couple of people from RTD, this is not by way of complaint. This is by way of, so what really is the right place for a board like this? You know, is it in communications because we're kind of representing the public? Or is it somehow closer to the RTD board because our role really is to give them advice and recommendations? Well, that's a good question. Um, and one thing that really isn't quite on the agenda, but I think it's part of this conversation is, as each of us meet with the RTD board members, I think we should talk to them about some of that stuff. You know, what, what do they think? what would be the best way for us to help out the board and provide them with recommendations? And who do they think we should be reporting to? And 
probably all this stuff they haven't thought about, but okay, you know, you're sitting down with them at a nice informal meeting. This is a great time to talk to them about that. Let's see what they say. Um, anyway, it, it's, it's probably our best chance to do it, you know, kind of one-on-one, two-on-one, whatever it's going to be. So that's kind of, you know, the agenda, the role within the agency, relationship to board and staff, how does the committee determine what to share with the board and how do we really best do that? And then the last one, we'll get to future meeting topics, which again is, so how do we really decide what to, what to work on? Um, and, you know, and, and I, I would say one more thing, because Joe mentioned it when he was talking to me earlier, so I'll give him credit for it, which is, you know, we currently meet once a month for two hours. You could argue some months, well, you don't really have much to talk about, that's fine. But there are obviously some months where there's a pretty hefty issue. By the time you get done learning about it and asking questions, well, our two hours are up. <laughs> that doesn't leave a lot of time for us to then formulate an opinion. So what do we do about that? And those are all just, you know, Throw them out on the table here, folks who you folks who are on the phone or on Zoom. Um, let us know if you have something to say. Either just say something, jump in, raise your hand, whatever it may be, so we know that you're you want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. I'll just give my perspective. Just have, I guess Joanna and I, Joe and I, probably. Oh, yeah. And and we wrestle with this so much. Um, but I think that my reflection is it was set up as a sort of communication. I'm not to on the screen now, where you know we could go out to where we influence people and talk about what we know, and people who we know can talk about issues of concern and communicate that forward to people. But I, but I think there's been a sense for a long time that it needs to evolve as if we're smart, knowledgeable people and if we can contribute way more than that. That's that's sort of the crux of the, mm -hmm. of the issue, right? But, you know, from my perspective, the, the problem has been as much with the staff in the past as it is with the board. The staff didn't really know what to do with us. Um, and I think there's a lot of confidentiality issues. I think that Concerned about sharing stuff and, and you're not trusting us to keep things confidential or keep pull things back until decisions are made. And I think that and I think that's a, a relevant issue, right? Well, our meetings are public in theory, but stuff but stuff staff would bring to us ahead of a board meeting and say, "Hey, well, how, we'd like your input on a critical thing that we're working on." Um, and, and and I'm not sure they feel that they can do that all the time, and then we can keep it as confidential ahead of it. So that's what I mean. They can't really keep it confidential. Anybody could join this meeting. Not very many right. people. So, so, not so, many so, people do, but but as a result, I think the staff doesn't bring us as much right. or brings the kinds of things we want to right. kind of see and weigh in on. You know, um, and in the past, when we've done these board meetings. We've done that, Matt. We've said to the board, hey, this is it. And, they, and, and everyone says, wow, I, I kind of didn't realize what a great resource you guys were. And let me think about how we, and, and, and then it never really turns into an actionable kind of thing. So um, I, I think these board meetings are, are the one on ones or two on ones, whatever the name of it is, are really great. I think it really is important to be understand who the board members are individually. But I, I think it's incumbent on us to go to them with a, a plan, as opposed to waiting for them to say to us, hey, how would you guys like to do this? Or how would you guys like to do that? Do you think we should be more active in providing recommendations and concerns directly to the board? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Yes. I would what, add. Was this an artifact of uh, Fast Tracks? What, what started the. Uh, yeah, there was. It yeah. was. 
it was a it was a single line on a fast tracks resolution. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, there would be a citizen advisory committee. Okay. Not, so there's no, <laughs> there's no no guidance about what it would look like. So we, you know, just evaluate it. I see. But the primary focus of fast tracks, and then a few years later, as fast tracks kind of got through the planning phase of the yeah. on autopilot a little bit. Right. Uh, they they restructured it. That's right. I'm wondering maybe the RTD staff started to uh, get more detached, you know, since the fast track program. You know, I think it's the same problem that there's every jurisdiction has a citizen advisory committee. Right. right? Is right. You only meet once a month. The staff process is happening on the schedule that it happens. There's always reluctance about sharing things before the uh, policy body sees it. But then, how do you advise if it's if it's now gone mm -hmm. to the board as a recommendation? How do you advise? So it's all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Joanna. Well, I just to reflect off of what Roger just said. It's sometimes we get out of sync with all of that because if we get RTD to give us a briefing on something ahead of the board, how do we get back to the board if we only meet once a month? And what's the timing on everything? So sometimes that results in us not participating in a way we'd like to just because of that challenge. That said, something that's an improvement that's happened since some of us have been on this committee is that. We've started asking anybody who presents to us to ask for something back from us. To ask for our not just come in and go, oh, here's how the budget looks, or here's whatever, you know, whatever they're gonna share, but rather say, here's all of the stuff we want to share, and we want your input on these two points. So we want so they actually ask us and engage us as a committee, and that's actually been coming along pretty well. And for a while, we weren't getting asked anything. So that's that's an improvement to the committee that works in the context of a monthly meeting. Being able to go the next step to help the board with things. I guess I'm thinking back to when we all went to the legislature, because they were those that we could help with all about what well, the future of the board was for RTD was. And, and we then reached out side of the context of our meetings and we all showed up at the legislature those of us who spoke to the second speak barbara had, i'm going to call barbara one second uh, the way i have described over the years the committee is a it's an informed focus group and so as, as often as we'd like to be able to have a deliberate process to come up with a solid recommendation that doesn't typically fit within a monthly meeting schedule or the board schedule so i've always thought we get people with a variety of backgrounds who have taken the time to um, come up to a level of knowledge about the organization and your snap kind of reaction to uh, the staff giving you a, a presentation and asking you for some feedback may be the best that we can do, but you're, you're coming and giving that feedback from a, a more place. So that's why I think of it as a focus group. Those people come in, they're asked some things, they're asked to react. They're not, they're not given the time to study it and think about it. And I think that's valuable, that kind of information can be valuable. Well, let Barbara go, then I have a comment on that. Hi, everyone. So um, as you know, we do have now smaller committees and the executive committee has a much larger role in uh, some of the management um, governance wise and day to day um, um, at, in their role uh, on the executive committee. I mean, I think that I know that you read out um, at if you have things to read out at the board meeting uh, once a month, but if you are working on uh, anything in particular, you know, you put together a white paper on certain subject matters that you may be seeing in the community or hearing in the community, you can always get them to me and I can get them to the executive committee and, you know, they can, you know, disperse them to the board and have that discussion, you know, as they, as they feel that they need to. I mean, I don't think that you have to, you know, wait. I mean, if you're you know, working on something, then they should know what you're working on in the moment. So, you know, sharing that information, you know, anybody can, anybody at the CAC as a whole or as individual members can email me at any time. 
if they have any questions. Um, I'm pretty sure that Roger fills you in on all of the hot topics and all of the things that are going on at RTD that you may be, that you may be able to funnel information that you're hearing um, out and about on the street. And you know they are interested in that information. You know, figuring out a way to get it to them, you know, a process. Uh, may be something to look at, but I think that if you bring it forward to the executive committee, they can work with you and figure out the best way to move this forward, because right now that is their role. Their role this year has changed. Okay. Barbara and I talk multiple times a week. So, <laughs> so one, thing you should, one thing you should know is that we have been giving, I guess, every couple of months a very quick update to the board. And I will say, and, and usually it's just, you know, here's the topics we talked about, the, the, what, you know, what you'd expect. There have been a couple of times, at least I did this, you can hopefully forgive me, um, where I did try to indicate what I thought our group's concern or recommendation was. Now, it wasn't something we had voted on or talked about because, as usual, we ran out of time, right? And, and, and again, that takes a while. You can't, you know, it takes more than five minutes at the end of a meeting. Somebody says something and then I may agree, I may disagree, you may agree, you may disagree. It takes a while. Um, but there were things that I think we thought yeah, that's pretty much the consensus of the committee. It was pretty clear everybody agreed with this. We didn't hear anybody complaining about it. So fine, let's pass that on to the board. And so we have passed some small number of recommendations and concerns onto the board on some issues. And maybe we just need, a again, a better way of doing that. Um, the only other thing I would say, based on Roger's comment, is... You know, there are the long-term issues we've been looking at, like reimagine and the FAIR study. And in a way, those are a little easier at the moment because they come back every once in a while. We learn a little bit more. We give them some comments and some concerns, you know, and so it goes. Now, at the end of those processes, I guess it's going to be the same question, which is, are we going to see the staff recommendation in time for us to actually say something to the board or is the staff recommendation gonna to go to the board before we see it? In which case we're kind of out of the loop. And I don't know. I don't know. I the, whole, the goal is they've been coming back on regular intervals and getting input along the way. Right. So, you know, in that regard, your comments have been incorporated into the role. We hope. These are two, I mean, this is a new, those are two examples where I think both project teams, you know, came like when the RFP was out, uh, and you know, you had multiple sessions with the reimagined. But still, well, eventually, eventually, they will come up with a recommendation, and you know, hopefully, we'll agree with it. That would be cool. I no problem with that. But we may have some yeah. concerns, and do we get do we get in there, <laughs> or do you know do we hear from them after the board's made the decision? And it's like, yeah, okay, well, that's great. And, and then, of course, there are the, the one-offs. I mean, those are the ongoing ones. But there's plenty of other stuff we hear about that, you know, are not these multi-year projects. They might only be a month or two months or three months or something that's important at the moment. And that's really where the issue comes up of, you know, can we hear about it, have a conversation about it in a timely manner so we can actually say something to the board it's hard, we only meet once a month. And as you said, and I get it, they are the staff is not thrilled with giving us the information before it's really been released publicly and the board knows about it. Because when they talk to us, in theory, that's releasing it publicly. So that's a tricky, I don't know how to solve that exactly. <laughs> So I used to be on the customer panel, I think, uh, and it changes like every year their whole panel turns over, but they mostly get leveraged by staff. But we actually, I would almost say at some level, achieve more stuff. So like 
the year I was on it, the flex ride, uh, and special services team was really trying to bring that flex ride or change your phone call ride and make your customer experience better and stuff. But in a sense, they could share a lot with us and like in a sense bounce ideas off because it wasn't going to the board, right? Like it was like a safe space, and like we would like as a writer perspective, you to guide this, but please or know that this is under like a draft format, not a proposal, right? So I think that's a little bit of the space we're in is uh, on the staff side, it maybe isn't very clear, like, you know, what level of preparation slash formalness do they need to be with us, right? You know, are we just like a, a sort of tough or like a panel, you know, in a sense that like gives input or are we, you know, a bridge to the board at which point if you're a staff member, you're probably going to be a lot more further along your process, which then makes it harder for us to get input if that makes sense, right? It's so like how do you, uh, yeah, how do you get more teams to do what say your magic is done, which is come to us really early on, knowing that like this is nowhere close to like a board, you know, plan is just like keeping us updated. But how do you get other teams to feel really comfortable with that? I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, it's a good question. I've been around so long that there was a major uh, debate by the board when we were creating the outline for this committee about should this be like a planning board. There was a there was a faction of the board that wanted wow. this committee to be like a planning board, and all big decisions go through the CAC and with a recommendation for or against that would come to the board. Uh, so yeah, I well, that, I mean that is how that's how it's how, you know it's how cities work. Um, they would probably have a slightly different process in selecting members of the board in that case. But I mean, it is how cities work. Yeah. Well, how cities select yeah. uh, planning board members then? Yeah. Well, a right. A lot of them are just political or, or activists. In the, in the well, yeah. sure. Of course, they. Of course, <laughs> so, that's true. Um, yeah. I mean, that is a different, a different kind of sort of system but, to be true. But it was a minority is, board members. Yeah. That yeah. Obviously that was, uh, I mean, this is probably a little bit harder. It's harder in every way, just because the district <laughs> is so gigantic. You know, at least in a city. People live in the city. They have. Yeah, uh, this is Joe, and I, I have a thought, uh, as usual. Um, and that is um, maybe what needs to happen for this group is that we need to, even though it's called an advisory committee, we need to go back to Roger's um, notion and set the expectation for folks that this is really a focus group. It's not an advisory committee. And, and to me, if you set the expectation that way, then some of the frustration that some of us have felt might not be there because our expectation would have been more, uh, well, yeah, you know, we're just there to feed, send some feedback and we're not really there to advise. So call it what it is. I mean, I think you also you know, acknowledge that there were times that staff have wanted this to be really just ambassadors for the organization. Yeah. I think that's how uh, we ended up in the communications world. Let us tell you what you're going to go out and tell me. Yes. Yeah. Well, that would be a very different sort of committee. I mean, I must say, Joe, I, I, I mean, I get what you're saying, and I, I think <laughs> You've been through a lot on this committee, way more than me. So I, I can see why, where your frustration comes from. Um, I don't know. I guess I still have a hope that we could be a little more than that. I mean, we're certainly not a typical focus group that Roger knows and loves so well because people... I use the word informed focus group. Well, it's, it's a very well-informed focus group, both because the number of the issues we follow for, like, reimagine. Right. You know, we follow we, you know, month after month after month. A normal focus group would never do that. And secondly, the people they've been selecting for the board, an awful lot of people in this group have quite a bit of transit experience or at least kind of city urban planning type of experience, which again is very different than kind of a semi-random focus group, right? I mean, this is a group of ringers. These are people who who know something about mobility and how people get around. And to not use that, I think would be a big shame. Yeah. In the past, when I've heard everyone's longer introductions, every time I've thought to myself, hey, this group could do something. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I would just say um, that maybe it benefits us not to be pigeonholed in any one thing. And, you know, no one's going to say, like, stay in your lane because I don't really have one lane. Um, <laughs> like, I'm fine being an ambassador at times. I think RTD needs that. Happy to go write an op-ed about something. Absolutely. And then also, yeah, behind closed doors, doing some work one-on-one -on -one with staff. Like, totally. So maybe all of it. But I guess just a question, too, for those who have been around longer than me would be, like, can you share some examples of, I, I guess, topics or um, stories where we've been effective as a group here, working with staff or with the board? Hmm. You know, I, I, I guess it's how you define effective. There have been, uh, the group has given very good input along, mm -hmm. along the way. And I think it, it impacts the way the staff thinks about things. It may not be on a specific, you know, the one item, but they hear kind of how we're thinking about the agency, how we're thinking about some areas. And I think that gets wrapped into other areas or other projects. Um, you know, the group has taken positions like on finishing backtracks and some of those things that, you know, the board asked the committee to provide, you know, specific comments. Several committee members did kind of have testified on various issues of the legislature over the years. So is that influencing? Is that at, you know, is that an ambassador role? That's a good point where you know it's not clear what the role is, but that it was important. I'd like to think, and again, I've only been at this for a little less than two years, um, that in our conversations with reimagine and kind of getting the fair study going. It seems to me people on this committee have asked some very good questions or raised some concerns that I think staff took to heart and incorporated into their way of doing things. Now, it's a little hard to like pluck it out and say, oh, yeah, that's that's what we did. But I think I mean, it feels to me like that's the case. And that's a big deal. I mean, as you know, that's just as big a deal as talking to the board because how staff works through these processes is what is going to set up the final product, um, which frankly the board will probably approve when it gets to them. Eh, they may tweak it a little bit, but don't, I suspect they will basically approve it. You know, some, a couple of times, and it's been back now, to, when I say before COVID, we were actually on meeting. We gave input to staff for some of these, I want to call them like computer simulated question answer activities where they were trying to get information to the public. And I believe staff took it to us first. And then we we were sort of the guinea pigs, but we also gave input on not just answers to their questions, but gee, do you want to format differently? Or is that giving the best answer? And staff did appreciate that. And that wasn't a direct thing to board, but it was also something where we were useful as a committee because we had connection to all kinds of different people in the community and our oversight on that activity. I think it's at least twice we did that for different That's a good word. You were a focus group. They were, they were bringing to you an idea they had about how to do how to yeah, yeah. Could you help refine it. So that was something mm -hmm. you know that we actually did too. I think one other area I would say is these one-on-one -on -one meetings with board members. Yeah. We don't know the interaction that board members have with senior leadership or staff, or you know, there is constant contact and communication. And so these opportunities to talk about your thoughts about the, the agency, your thoughts about the committee, your thoughts about how decisions are made, uh, your perception of how yeah. the agency's uh, looked at in the community, that has an impact. But we don't know how it may play out. But I mean, that's why I really think these, these meetings uh, with board members are so critical. And several of you have been through several of them. They're very good meetings. So they said, are they great? Sorry, they're, they're, they're really great. And what's, what's fascinating are the certain board members are way more curious about what we think than others. Um, so there's two opportunities. And one is to be as frank as possible when somebody is curious, but the other is to, you know, be forthcoming um, and 
things that we speak of and take the initiative to some of the other board members to let them know what you think. Sorry, I didn't oh, interrupt. No problem. I just had a question. So, we were the one on one meetings with Penny before it just got derailed with COVID? Or? Yeah. yeah. Not every year. And there's there's like the last two or three on. Yeah, it's two too many members in one board. So, would we be better off? I'm just tossing out questions at our meetings, spending more time on kind of one meaty topic so that we really had a little more time to dive into it and then discuss it amongst ourselves. I mean, not every topic is super meaty. Obviously, some things that come to us are just simply 15 minute updates so we know what's going on. That's fine. I'm not suggesting we get rid of that. That's it's useful. It keeps us in the loop, but that's that's good. But you know, would we be other than those better of saying, okay, we're going to talk about I don't know what, the fair study for an hour and a half, and we're going to talk to staff. We're going to ask them questions. We're going to discuss it. We're going to think about you know do we have some concerns about where this is heading, about the way they're approaching it, about if it's at the staff level, if it's something ready to go to the board, then it would be more along the lines of, okay, do we have any recommendations for the board? Uh, so again, assuming we're in a timely fashion, which we may or may not be. So I'm just wondering, you know, our meetings are nominally two hours. Is that what we want to do? Or do we want to kind of keep having a couple of topics per meeting? <laughs> well, I think that the answer is both. I mean, sometimes if it just, if there are topics that we should spend a bit on. Sometimes there's two or three things that we can do about it. So I don't, I don't know that we need to have like a single format. But I think it, it maybe behooves us to have a list of issues where we do want to spend a lot of time in separate meetings of important well, I mean, I'm just thinking of a couple of meetings we had that I thought were really good on some of these longer ranging topics where we, people were weighing in, asking questions, offering ideas. And, you know, it's like, okay, time is up. And, and we didn't really then have a chance as a group yeah. to say, okay, you know, that was a really good question. Let's right. think about that some more. Uh, because we were often running on to the next topic. So I think the challenge with that, I mean, I think Ben is right. There's kind of a combination. The agency has things that they want to ask or provide information on. That's also how you become an informed group. Right. Uh, it feels to me like with, with the fair study and reimagined, you know, we kind of set the set the standard, like they started at the beginning and we're going to continue. So I think if we are, are on message when you meet with board members, when anytime we talk about it, those are two examples of how we want to be able to engage so that it becomes the culture that these projects bring stuff to you. Because I think if you say we want to do, we want to really dig into reimagine, I, I don't think we want to create a situation where the staff has to, because they, they just can't do it, prepare a bunch of stuff that isn't, that isn't falling within their workflow, oh, right. you know, to your meeting. But if, if they know that we want to hear they, on a regular basis, it, they keep coming back uh, as, uh, as things progress. And I, I thought the work we did on the accountability yeah. was, was really worthwhile. It really generated a lot of discussion and then it, it was very thought provoking. I thought. And, and there we did present our recommendations right. to the board. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and they were. I mean, I remember giving that report to them and they were interested in it and they actually came back and asked some questions. That one seemed to make a little bit of a dent. I do think that, that now that they want monthly updates and it aligns where we're getting regular touches on these major issues, there's an opportunity for you to say, you know, we're there. The committee was a little concerned about this little piece of it. That's going to impact when the board then is here's that that impacts staff and that's the, so it's, it starts to be kind of an iterative process. Right. 
So we're back to kind of, this is something we all need to talk to the board members about, kind of the fundamental problem of on many of the issues, not just long ranging ones, how do we get to things in a timely way? How does it, how does it get to us enough in advance so that we can see the material, we can have a conversation with staff, have a conversation with each other and actually get something either in writing or verbally to the board. Um, and how do we make that work? Because it's clear it doesn't always work. The thing I was thinking is, I think it's a, so the things we've done really well are the longer term strategy pieces, like reimagining the character. And who decides sort of the long range strategy parts? I actually don't think it's the board in a lot of cases. I think those ideas come from Deborah, they come from staff, and they get put into like a project proposal, right? And then it like starts. Um, and in a sense, yeah, those are reimagined the fair committee have done a really good job of incorporating this, but as these like other long-range strategy items appear, how do you like set that expectation up front? Like who is the like controlling person or the you know the, the people that we need to influence on that? And I'm not clear if that's the board or not, because I sort of feel like <coughs> probably start with staff, but hopefully all of that stuff happens now. Deborah, I think is is has worked very hard at making that very clear. Here's the board's role, here is the staff's role, more so than past general managers, which we needed. You know, I think that's where one of Dave's notes where he struggled because he couldn't say no to board members. Uh, but I still think if, if, if you know, the board signals that they really want CAC mm -hmm. engaged, that work still is, is going to do the, all the, the team's always going to do the work. Uh, and she will then, you know, try to incorporate that. It doesn't take away, it doesn't take away their leadership in those strategic meetings. Is there a way to get from like RTD what <coughs> range strategies and stuff they're working on? So like we get individual project stakeholders, right? Like I feel if I were Deborah, I'd be like, here's my master list of the 10 goals for this year or whatever that we're currently working on. And we can see how that aligns with like the stuff. We we're should have them come in with go over the strategic. A plan of the was adopted. Uh, you know, that kind of happened. It, you know, the last one, Deborah had just come in, it was a little clunky. And there was uh, some feeling each other out. What, what role was the board? What role was the, the you know, the Deborah's philosophy? So I think it, it was a little imperfect. Uh, but it's a, you know, it's a big document. And I think it lays out it, it is directly led to why uh, the fair study is happening, the, the new focus on equity is. In the change of tone is clear about equity is super important and the you know the discussion about where do we deliver service so we want to stay very deeply engaged because that's the future of the agency those mm -hmm. two projects well I, I think we have such an opportunity with deborah because she's can come up through the organization and in, in, in cdcac the way sure. traditionally the staff has seen it i think there's an opportunity to to engage her in a new and different way. And in it, I was struck, I, I remember commenting on it at the time, right? I ended up reimagining the meeting. And the union contract came up. The staff in the reimagined meeting said, can't talk about it, shut it down right away. And then it came to us. And she was amazingly forthcoming. I thought about mm -hmm. the union negotiations. And so I, it, it just struck me that there's an opportunity with her um, to engage her in a whole different way. Um, and the staff in general is engaged in that. Yeah, I would agree. I think Deborah's been really open and responsive. Um, and I, I mean, it, it, I think it does benefit us to say, to stay a little bit autonomous and nimble in our own way, but also It'd be good to ask her directly, like how this committee could be most useful. Yeah. And, I, and I like the idea about the strategic plan because one of the most memorable sessions to me is, you know, because somebody asked, well, what were some of the things that and this was three or four years ago, but um, the staff was reviewing a turkey strategy and they came in and, and talked about the RTDs, like the second biggest parking operator. In the state of Colorado, after DIA, DIA is 
biggest star TV set. The second part is parking operators, the stage. So there's a lot of really great information converting that they were like they're wrestling with. How much do we charge? And then we charge and we charge more in certain lots than we do in others. And and we were able to, it, it was sort of a focus group be kind of thing. But I I don't know, for some reason it really came forefront in my mind and then the issue came up. And that's a relatively small thing, but it's still a really important thing. And that and in the strategic plan, there's probably a bunch of that kind of stuff where maybe we could spend our time. Um, and, and be helpful with uh, certainly the staff. So how how far in advance do you, as in you personally, know what's making its way to the board for some sort of decision? How, how far in advance does anybody <laughs> know? In an uncomfortable <laughs> position. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why uh, you, you, know you can duck. Have, we have branded. We have a, a bigger focus from staff on trying to be active and bringing things to the committee. Uh, but it's the same, you know, it, the, the staff process is happening. When it gets far enough along, they'll come to a committee. Sometimes that's the first that, that I hear. Uh, you know, I hear things, but I, you know, I'm constantly talk to board members. So I get the behind the scenes scoop, and that's how we often get in, in brought in. Because we'll probably you know, all for something. Well, look, not, but there's so much going on. Well, most just, things, yeah, yeah. most things, not going to come to the CAC, either because it makes no sense or because we only have just so much space to focus on a few issues, and that's fine. That that's that's true of a lot of advisors. That's why we've never gotten involved like service changes. Never had a discussion right. about should the P have three runs a day or two runs right. a day because it's just those kinds of operational things. That is just not what this committee is for. Right. It's for vision stuff. Very long. There are over 500 steps <laughs> for service changes every year. Well, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have any value for that. Right. No. But I mean, what I'm thinking about is, you know, obviously, if you know something's coming to the board in two and a half months and staff's working on it, and it is something that we potentially would be interested in, how do we kind of jump in? At, at the right moment. Um, if, if we only find out about it and it's going to the board in two weeks, well, obviously there's no hope. You know, I think in most cases, if it's a, a significant issue that is transformative, you know, you'll hear about it because the board will be getting updates multiple times along the way. If I can just share one experience from this year that just felt very chaotic. So this whole fair free transit month, like during ozone season. Oh, yeah. So it was, <laughs> so I first saw it in what, like October and the governor's 2022 budget request, free transit during ozone season. Assumed that RTD was totally on board. Not true. <laughs> um, and, and it was kind of quiet, right? For like four or five months. And then in maybe mid February, I heard that um, Deborah and RTD was were not on board with free transit. They just want to do one day a week, the spare the air day idea. Um, and it took a few of us nonprofits just kind of bugging the board and Deborah personally to get her on board and talking with the union about it. It was very like difficult. And then, I mean, it took a while for the board to get information about it. They just took a vote on it last week and it's already on the house floor in the legislature. I and mean, it's like a done deal basically. And the board's still voting on it. It just felt very disorganized. Whereas, like in October, we could have said, "Okay, what's the best way to do this? Let's get everyone on board. Let's think through the good ways to design the program for next summer." Um, and it, you know, I guess because we didn't do that, it almost fell apart at the last minute. I'm glad it's moving forward, but now I think, like from this point to August, maybe what can this committee do to ensure that program in August is successful? Assuming we do get a free. August statewide, and that bill does pass in the Senate. But just one experience, I was like, Yeah, I think, I think that's a great yeah. example. Of, but I think, partially, as to me, it's an example of how poorly the General Assembly treats RTD, and um, it doesn't. I mean, they, they impose stuff on RTD yeah. without RTD yeah. being really right. Yep. All the way. That's I think that's one thing. But the other thing is, uh, we have a governor that doesn't take that. <laughs> right. 
learn <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the basics about the agency. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but I do, but so that this may be something we can work on because it's August will be the time frame that gives us plenty of time to be working on it. That is a for what it's worth, it was just as chaotic behind the scenes at RTD as it appeared. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have been what I did with the money, but I didn't win that battle, and I wouldn't have regardless. But, I mean, you can argue it different ways, I suppose. I, <clears throat> I still think service is more important than free fares. I think you'll see maybe a small bump, but not a very big bump. Yeah. People just do not change their lives because for a few weeks they can save a tiny bit of money, especially in August when everybody's on vacation, the schools are out, um, college kids aren't coming up to Boulder. You know, it's kind of a month that, I, yes, we have high ozone then, of course, because we have a lot of heat, I get that, but I think it's gonna be a kind of very minimal improvement for what you could have spent the money on, really. I mean, you, you know, getting people to change their behavior is a very non-trivial thing. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to get people to do that. Uh, and just saying, oh, for a couple of weeks or whatever, a few weeks, you can hop on a bus for free. Well, you know, whoop de do. So maybe a few people will, certainly on local routes, they'll hop on a bus where they previously might have walked, but they'll just revert to what they used to do when, you know, the following month. So I don't know. I, I mean, I, I understand what's driving it, but yes, I think you're right. The legislature kind of figures they don't have to particularly listen to RTD. And they can oh, just- would have been nice if we had had that debate here as a group. Yeah. Back in October. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's the debate that, because I, I agree with you, I think it's, it's, I'd rather see the money go to provide reliable, Reliable service that people can count on is what gets people to keep riding transit. Right? Yep. Um, but yeah. we could, you know, so that's where, you know, and, and right. people may disagree. It's too bad we couldn't have been engaged in that. So I, I totally agree. I, I think, you know, like we're going to give $20 million to our TV. That's not like year over year that we're going to change service for that. I think it's unlikely to get too many more people on the bus. I think people might experience it for the first time and think to themselves, wow. We need better transit in the city. <laughs> yeah. um, and then when it's on the ballot two years later, vote for it or something. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but hold I, your breath. Yeah. yeah. But I think more than that, it's just like a good marketing tool. Yeah. And maybe opportunity for like CDOT, RTD, and all the mayors here to come together and promote the same thing. Like agree on one thing for once. Um, <laughs> well, since that's what's going to happen, <laughs> yeah. hopefully at least we'll have that much out of it and we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, really what you need is, I mean, what turns people off, a lot of things, people just don't like riding transit for lots of reasons. And, you know, there's the safety aspect, the perceived safety aspect of it. And yeah, there's the the schedules and the, the inconsistency. Yes, some of it's about not having enough drivers, of course. I mean, I, I get all of that, but for an average rider, it doesn't matter what the cause is. You know, I, I get it's 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 gotten better, but I get a, I get stuff from RTD now because I signed up for it every time they uh, cancel a, an airport bus. And I'll tell you, I don't, for a while it was like every other day. Now it's a little better. They kept canceling the first bus out, the three thirty bus out of Boulder, which sadly I have taken more times <laughs> in my life than I want to. Okay, so there you are. You find out about this just before. It's 3.30 in the morning. You have a plane to catch. How are you going to get to the airport now that you you had just decided you were taking the bus? You're going to take a $120 taxi? Well, I can tell you how frequently you're going to use RTD after that, which is never. <laughs> so, Well, I think this would, be, this would be a good example when you're meeting the board members. Right, as, as we're talking about, I think a good, the good side is fair study and you know, reimagine how we can draw along. Uh, a, an example of where we could have been helpful was there was all this internal discussion going on. Would the, uh, that been something with the CAC? Because we represent a lot of different constituencies. Right. Could you have brought us in? And don't get into was the decision right or wrong, but this is just an example of 
an issue that has big implications. And you know, we could we could lobby the state legislature. I'm not saying we'd get anywhere, don't, don't get me wrong, but it, it, we're not a bad group to use that way. I, I, I lobbied the state legislature many times, of course, and I wouldn't have any problem going down there. And, you know, Steve Fenberg, who's the Senate Majority Leader, is, you know, I know Steve. Um, he's not going to do what I tell him to do, but at least I can talk to him about something. And, you know, others of us know various representatives of the legislature. But so the board, in a sense, and Deborah could use us. Nothing wrong with that. No. Right. And I think they kind of missed an opportunity to take advantage of this group. You know, we had some folks come and talk to us from the legislature. And we, well, and, one came. And oh, yeah, I guess one of them right. they, they they talked to yeah. us. And she had she did a nice presentation and spoke well, but she didn't know in depth what she was talking about all the time. Like being nice. I mean, it wasn't like she she was enthusiastic. She had some good information, but it made me wonder. We stepped back and then we listened to RTE talk about the same things in a little different context. And I thought, well, is there some way we could help teach the people at the legislature? I don't know if that's a word you can even use with those guys, but um, give them more information and insights so that the two sets of people could work better together. Because it was like face ideas were super wonderful, but when you drill down in, it was like, oh well, we're competing with every other county in the state for this money, and we it's a competitive fund, and RTD will get this little teeny bit, and we need this much money, not that much. Uh, and, options, and, right? and it yeah. didn't it didn't come out in the end as well as it could have. And it's and like I say, I, I feel as if they did, and they don't. It's hard to, how do you give them like sound bites and bits of information so they can act forward? But is there some way that this committee could help with that in a positive way, not to criticize? Yeah, I I, that's a really good point. I, and I just felt like RTD is not very good advocates for themselves <laughs> or negotiators. Right. Like we knew in September that this idea was coming, the free transiting ozone season. If in September we sat down with Steve Fenberg and Faith Winter and said, okay, $28 million, like maybe this is a better use. Like this is what this committee yeah. thinks. I agree. We'll take it to the board, we'll take it to staff. Let's put this in your air quality package instead. We could have done that. We could do this next year too. I mean, this year in August or September, that there's an interim legislative meetings. So if we do have those recommendations, I think we just got to be like proactive rather than being the last people to hear about it. Well, and if you hear about those things because of, you know, yeah. your role, bring them in to talk about things. Yeah, I don't know. And it's that. the same with the accountability committee. Does anyone really think that that moves the needle? Yeah. Uh, I'm not but, so but sure. They, the legislature felt like they had to do something. The governor's office wanted to do something. So yeah. that's what happened. I'm not so sure, Roger. You can either correct me if I'm wrong or, 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 or uh, opt out altogether saying anything. But I mean, I'm just not so sure that the staff, at least, wants to loop this committee in to negotiations with the state legislature. You know, I mean, you know, look, with any, with any agency, you've got, unless we're aligned with what their position is, right, it puts them in a very uncomfortable position. Plus, that those negotiations happen quickly. There's lots of other external stakeholders that are pushing. So it, it almost becomes a no way. Yeah. But I do think RT would have benefited from asking us and sharing with us the discussions that were going on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. There was a lot of opportunities that RT was potentially missing on in our government stuff. And I guess we could have been on the committee longer. I want to ask like, City of Denver has like pretty consistently come with, or say, like last meeting with like you were working on, you know, some like small wins to improve bus speed and stuff. And, like, I sort of feel like those projects don't actually get a lot of, or like, we didn't spend much time talking to Snow right? but there's probably a lot of city and county projects that impact our TV that no one is really influencing or, you know, saying, hey, this is really what would, you know, benefit writers most or benefit our TV most or something. How do you know, it sounds like maybe leverage some of that? Because 
not really sure either how Denver has got so long, but Denver seems to understand it to come to us. And no, no one else does like the whole country, right? Uh, but that's that's something I would observe a little bit is their transportation systems presented a couple different things to us that they were working on that they had our team. That's no, that, we have had very few of those. Yeah, we have uh, I think the only reason that did is because it has uh, a larger possible impact on how RTD looks at, uh, you know, bus, bus lanes and PRT and some of that. All right, so people on. <laughs> Does anyone on, on Zoom have any comments? They're still there, we think. It's always hard to tell if they're there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, pure but, one of the great advantages of Zoom. <laughs> yeah, anybody in Zoom land have a comment? I am here, but I don't have a comment. All right, thanks. <laughs> anybody else? My, com my comment would be, um, it's... It, yeah, it's, it's like I know an application, a lot of it is very hard. It's very hard to translate something that's like big picture to operation. And you know, it's like a part of me, just like when I heard it was oper going to be announced, I'm like, you're going to fumble it. Just don't know how. Um, I mean, like the, the, the just kind of like how I expected it. I mean, like the running gag about RTD, it's, it's called not rapid transit, de uh, what was it? rapid regional transit department. It's called reason to drive. And I mean, like, yeah, like you're saying, Matt, like you get one, like you, you, you try to rely on it, but you can never rely on it. And it, it's hard to establish trust with people in the community, especially when that reliability is broken. Um, yeah, in the sense of how this committee relates to the, uh, uh, like RTD board, I, I know an NDA might help if that, if they're worried about private confidentiality and privacy uh, to talk to us um, that if uh, the way the channeled communication from what I pick up from this conversation is that's very top down. So, I mean, if anything that helps um, uh, strengthen that channel of uh, confidentiality, that might help. But um, yeah, we're all just kind of figuring out what this committee is. And that's kind of a little bit of our detriment too. We, uh, we did look at the NDAs when this was originally formed, and there's no provision in law because we're not elected officials. There are no elected officials that there's, you can't do an NDA and keep it confidential. You're, you're public members once the agency gives you something that's a public member, it's public. Yep. But these, I mean, these meetings surely have to be public. You can't have private meetings, it's just not allowed. Um, because the agency, supports the functioning of the committee it has to be right public. yeah exactly right. exactly there it's a committee of rtd we're not an independent group that kind of got together to talk about transit if we were we could do whatever we want but so for examples what they can do like ndas if, if there was a, a public committee that was uh, formed to vet general manager candidates if it falls under what uh, state law allows to be confidential, we think uh, they could do that. Yeah. So maybe we find out who the finalists were for uh, CU president. <laughs> was oh, wait, that's a, <laughs> it's, it's a kind of off topic. <laughs> but that was, yeah, no, that's a great point Stephen made up there. And that was looked at. The general counsel at the time did a whole memo on that because that was. Yeah, no, I'm, that's, that's correct. You just can't do that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that's always going to be a bit of a problem. We'll always run up against, I assume, some cases where staff just simply doesn't want to come and talk to us early because, in theory, then it becomes public. And they would say, you know, this isn't ready for somebody's going to get a hold of it. Somebody write an article about it. You know, they should have lit the fan. And it's still just all in the working stage. I get that. I mean, I empathize with that. It just puts us in a difficult position for how we give recommendations to the board in a timely fashion. So I think, yeah, I feel like things are changing though at that too, with everything being on YouTube. Like you can watch all the CDOT commission hearings on their workshops on YouTube. It's like eight hours of meetings with commissioners 
and they'll they talk about all kinds of shit. I mean, drafts, proposals. And you know, previously that was like, you know, if you wanted to hear it, you have to come see that headquarters and like three people would come every month. Mm -hmm. Now you could watch any of it, you know. Um you gotta be a real junkie to watch tra <laughs> transportation <laughs> junkie. <laughs> you know what? You can watch it on 1.5 speed. That would help. Really Maybe about eight <laughs> speed. Yeah. That would help even more. <laughs> but even in that case, there's been a lot of process to get to what the draft looks like. So. Yeah, I suspect. You know, again, I, I saw this on the council, and in our case, things generally did go to some board or commission in advance, but that doesn't mean there first wasn't some work internally on documents before they were surfaced um you know initial drafts of things are not and, and again they can't be i mean yes staff has to be able to work on stuff internally mm -hmm. they can't every single thing they work on internally can't be public it would they go nuts it's just how do we get into the loop so i think you know when we meet with the board members clearly that's one of the questions. I mean, we sounds like we've talked about a number of the questions, which is, you know, what do they think the role of the board is? Although I think we should kind of push them and say, hey, you've got this board of really educated people who understand transit, mobility, urban planning, urban design, the whole range of stuff. Um, and we, you know, take advantage of us and we should be involved in, a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. We're well aware we're just making recommendations. That's fine. We don't make the final decisions. Um, and then how do we get things in a timely enough manner, given all the real problems we just discussed? How do we get things in a timely enough manner that we can actually provide them with some useful information? whether again whether it's a recommendation or just a concern or an idea or some questions we think that weren't asked that needed to be asked or should have been asked whatever it might be um and let's see what they what they say but i, I don't think we should be shy we really said this about um you know getting them to understand the, the board could really be a valuable asset and how do we work with them to make that happen more than maybe sometimes it is happening right now? Has anyone from the CAC ever become a board member or Angie? Angie. 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 Her first interaction with Peter was she was on the very original oh. CAC. Yeah, we had others run. Melvin Bush ran. There's some other people that ran that weren't successful. I think we should, as part of that, also ask them. You know, they probably haven't thought about this, and I'm not sure what what we think <clears throat> is how that does it matter who or what the reporting structure is with an RTD. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't matter at all. Honestly. Um, Maybe what really matters is the answers to the other questions about how we stay in the loop, how we, how we get information to the board, and so on. I mean, the only thing about the reporting structure that I can think of um, really is, comes back to how do we get things in a timely manner? How do we know about important stuff that's working its way through the system? How do we know about it fast enough, early enough, and how do we get staff to come talk to us about it that's what's really key so why don't i'll pull together kind of a summary of some of this and send it around so you all can give some comments and then we'll send out kind of here's the suggested bullet points that we want so that consistency each board member hears some consistency and i think then you also share your own frustrations or things that you found interesting or problematic about the committee and i hope also those of you that are turning off still do these meetings it's real important oh yeah absolutely you've been on the longest you have the most experience by far i mean a lot of us have just been around for a relatively short time at this point mm -hmm. um, so the other question how does the committee determine what to share with the board i guess i just offer this when 
you know, when we have the time, I, I think we can try to discuss it. It doesn't mean we're going to discuss every single thing somebody raised. I mean, you can't, even city councils don't do that. You'd go nuts. You know, people can kind of raise whatever they want to raise. But within some kind of managed scope, if we have the time and some key issues came up, I think we should discuss them. If we don't have the time, which is probably more likely, um, I don't know, are people okay with what we somewhat informally done, which is, well, we report to the board, at least verbally, and, you know, we kind of get the gist of the, of the group, the consensus of the group, and, and go with that as best as we can. Again, it's not a vote. It didn't give everybody a chance to weigh in necessarily, and that's a little unfortunate. But it gives us an opportunity to, to say, hey, you know, the board, we had this discussion. There were four questions about this. <laughs> People were really interested in this aspect of the conversation, whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, because I think it is important when we give our updates to the board, it's more than just a kind of a recitation of, oh, yeah, we talked about the fair study, ho hum. It's we talked about the fair study, and here were the concerns that were raised. So that's, I mean, that's the best I can offer. Other than that, we'd need longer meetings or more meetings. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. something's got to give. Um, and, you know, Roger, Roger can't listen to this, but Roger does a very good job of, of synthesizing kind of what came out of the meeting. And also because he knows so much about what's going on at RTD from all the other stuff he does with RTD, he can kind of put it in a context that, that makes sense to offer something to the board. Now that said, I think for some key issues, you know, the accountability committee that's now gone, maybe reimagine. I'm hoping we have the time to actually write just a one pager to the board with some bullet items that says, here are our recommendations. And actually give it to them, not just the, the night of, but, you know, a little in advance. And then when we give our updates, we can talk to them if they have any questions. But we'll see. I mean, we need an issue where we have the time to do that. All right. Yep. Future meeting topics. Send them in. <laughs> yeah, you know, bring them, you know, shoot me an email. We kind of keep a running list, uh, and you yeah. can talk about it then at the next meeting. Yeah, cool. Don't just rely on RTD staff to bring you stuff. If you see something that you think could be valuable, definitely send it to Roger so we can make, a, make ourselves aware of it. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. But, I, but honestly, I think most of the insight comes from. Roger and internally to let us know what stuff they are actively working on. And because we're not going to know. No. I was going to add, although it's, it's item number four, um, as we, my term is up as a co chair. And the reason I'm bringing that up right at this moment is one of the things that happens is the co chairs meet a couple weeks ahead of this meeting and, with Roger and we pull. <coughs> that kind of information together to, to put together agenda for future meetings. So not only connect with Roger, but you can also email or text or whatever you want to do, either whoever your co-chairs are. Yeah. And I'm, I'll be stepping down in June, but. Um, and and Brandon's joining those now. So <laughs> yeah, so correct. More so with so now, now that's, that's going to help us even more to, to start to create into the future. But that's an opportunity for any of you to, to you know, zing us when something comes up. So that when we have that meeting, we try to pull things together. We go, oh, you know, yeah. Matt said this or whatever. You know, we want to. Uh, well, does the does the board ever solicit uh, advice from from the committee then directly, or uh, what is that? Well, I, you know, I, I will say when we started giving them the updates, they not all of them. 
but a number of them did really encourage us to provide recommendations and ideas to the board. And they seem honestly interested in that. Um, again, I don't think it's every board member, but it's enough of them to make a difference. And we just need to figure out how to make that work. Yeah, they're stuck in the same problem, right? They yeah. know it's yeah. coming I, always I, forward. That's right. true. It's half yeah. day to three quarter hours. Right? When we so have so these meetings, same. though, that yeah. are coming up, the two on one meetings, that's another chance for us yeah. to. We should ask. We should ask to, what's, start to ask what, what's important about. to them and yeah. then push that forward into yeah, the that's, meetings. That's, so. That's good. You know, I'll I'll look at the the board agendas and stuff. But and this is hardly RTD. This is typical. You know, the board agendas don't get posted to like a week in advance. Okay, that's effectively useless. Yeah, right. I didn't tell you anything. Now, admittedly, some issues go <coughs> to them more yeah. than once or go to one of their committees. And if you happen to notice that, that gives you a little bit of a a head start. Um, but you know, mostly Roger, I, I kind of count on yeah. Roger to, and other staff, RTD staff to, to kind of figure that out because they know what's coming. They know what they're sure. working on. Yeah. They know what the, they know internally. Oh, we think we're going to present this at such and such a yeah. meeting. Um, it's on their internal calendar. We don't see that, but it's got to be on their internal right. calendar. So that's, what's critical for us is to get the insight into that. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, if you have any other topics. One Can I throw out something? That I don't know enough, but I think in addition to the pre-fair this summer, I read there's another state bill that's like a tax credit for businesses that provide transfer passes to employees. And I've sort of wondered, like, what is RTD? Or same, same question as the free thing of like, you know, RTD has an eco pass, but that's really the extent of their employer air programs. Like, what are what is that law outline? And like, how is RTD considering like maximizing that? Because in a sense, it should be like free money, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah you get the employer to find the pass, the state reimburses the pass. And if RTD leverages it well, you get a lot of air paid, right? And whether the people write or not, it doesn't matter because it's just giving the employer to sign up, right? But I don't know anything about it other than just like yeah. the high level I saw the visual point. I've been working on that one a lot. Um, and I think it's the good chance it passes is it's bipartisan. Um, it's a tax credit for employers that offer transit passes or other carpooling van pooling to their employees, and it's 50% off of each mm -hmm. pass. Um, so pretty good. Um, we'll get to see like the fiscal note or whether there's any caps on that. So we'll see. Um, I think that'd be a yeah a good bill to get involved in, um, and how to roll that out and get employers interested in it and aware of it. Um, similarly, I was thinking about the new EcoPass pricing, which is extremely low. I just saw some numbers like hmm, Monday, and if you're a large business in Denver and like the there's different zones, but it's as low as twenty three dollars for the year for per employee, which is like. One one hundredth of a regional transit pass. Yeah, they, no, like that's because they, that's because they know so few employees use it. Yeah. Although downtown Denver, a bigger percentage do use it. Yeah, I think well, it's they like, lost yeah. it's obviously because people aren't right. People aren't many, using many, it. Many, uh, right, of course. Right, there's companies there's, that have historically bought eco passes with frogs. Yeah, and there's a formula based on ridership and right. COVID. Yeah, the killed right. that. Yeah. Right, I know, I know. I right, know. but if it's twenty three bucks. And you get fifty percent off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the a one ride to the airport, like for right. a whole year, right? right. Um, so if we can get every employer in the city to not sign up, I mean, it would be amazing. And sign up for the discount. You know, one issue it's still like we've talked about this a few times, which is kind of under the big heading of technology, of of getting them to come talk to us. You know, the, I I did take the bus down, and once again, which is not atypical, and I was sitting up in the front. I, I don't think anybody paid Why? cash. Everybody either had a pass or showed their phone or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I could tell, none of that was being tracked. Zero. I mean, absolutely. I, I did not see the driver do anything whatsoever to track anybody who came on the bus wow. and how they paid. So how do we know how many people are using the bus? How do we know how many people are paying? How do we know how many people are doing anything? Same and the answer the is we don't. <laughs> They do fare evasions uh, checks, which statistically are pretty accurate. 
and they but you know we still have uh ride cameras that go out yeah oh, buses so well that yeah that could be a thing for august right if it's going to be free maybe you install some technology there is there's no there's conceivable can. reason that i can think of uh, unless it's 1970 that they cannot track what every single person is doing oh, it's, 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 and it's <laughs> a very expensive technology to retrofit the whole system they've just never done it but they I, they I think they're looking at it and they've looked at it multiple times you know if you have the reloadable you know you have the reloadable but we're just always a decade behind two decades behind uh, three decades behind <laughs> if we were just a decade behind it would be great <laughs> but there's a lot of discussion Trains do have the counters, so they can track how many passengers are on the train car. Um, I believe for the commuter rail, so they can get those numbers. There's a door a sensor at the door. Yeah, a lot of the buses have it too. It's just like a little weird metal sensor yeah. over the door that. Oh my God. So we don't we'll know what's going on. Yeah, but what you really want to know is you want to know how did people pay. Yeah. You know, where are people coming and going? Did people transfer all the stuff that is that is well, trivial, absolutely trivial to get data on? And I, I mean, I, I always warn people about getting too tied up into data, and I, I'll give that warning again, even though I'm a data wonk. You can't, I mean, data doesn't answer all your questions, but when you're doing a fair study, it seems like you your base information has to be pretty good, or else. What are you, what are you using to figure out, you know, who's yeah. paying, who's not paying, where are they going, how many riders do we have, which routes really have more ridership, which have less? I mean, that stuff's hard to make up. Well, they need millions of dollars to put that. Technology on. For sure well, have that, there's not a data terminal or a button on the fare box that says the fare type. They do. Is the bus driver is sure the bus driver. Stop using that. But yeah, it's, a, it's like a keypad. Yeah, so they, they, should, should, but, you know, they don't use it. Know. They, I mean, they almost never use it. Sometimes you find a driver who uses it, but but generally they don't use it. And anyway, yeah. so, well, so from, okay, for, yeah. as a topic, a topic. someday. Can, more things. Yeah. Can I throw out two more? Um, so I think my favorite meeting of the year was the TOD one, the oh, Transit Range yeah. Development, which yeah. I had to leave early, but I thought. I think her name was Chessie Brady, was really good. Um, yeah. And she walked through, like, I mean, she's pretty frustrated about some of the, the stations and some of the constraints on development. Um, so that felt like the beginning of a larger conversation mm -hmm. that I'd like to be a part of. Um, and it strikes, I mean, land use is definitely a third rail in the state, but if, like, we're kind of in a position where we're not elected, we're not on the payroll at RTD. And so if there is like a meeting in Lakewood about TOD, that's maybe an opportunity for the CAC to show up yeah. and say like, this is good TOD. This would be really, really good for RTD. It's part of the fast track system and it'd bring more ridership. So I, I'd be interested in putting that on the agenda in the future. Um, yeah, that's good. And you know, I was actually impressed with what they were trying to do. But yes, of course, I mean, people seem to think that you, you know, you build rail or even BRT and magically this will all happen. And it's like, yeah. you know, I was on a city council. Things have to get rezoned. What? It, is, yeah. it is not magic. What's happening in these cities? Right uh, and, the and good luck getting things rezoned. Yeah. I mean, uh, RTD can do everything they can and they can even, you know, give discount rates for the land and do all, do all sorts of cool stuff. If the community um, doesn't want to rezone it, that's the end of that. So we got off with that now. Yeah, it's good. Okay, what else do we have? All right, so the, the main thing that I still want to try to get is people to sign up oh, yeah. for some of these board meetings. So pull out your calendars. Okay, I'm off the hook on this. Yeah, so I'm going to go to bed. Well, you guys, you that's who you've got one, which is still. We need everyone to do it. I want, I'd like everybody else to sign up first before I do. Yeah, yeah. everybody should. Maybe because we got one that we're setting up. Yeah, we, we got one. I mean, so I'm, let I, everybody pick theirs and then I we'll could see. maybe do another one, or I'll be gone for most of this. What time. do you mean? So the, the, um, I realize they're during work hours and it require people to take time away. Uh, but it is a free lunch. 
<laughs> oh, it's fun too. I thought there was no such thing really as a free enjoyed, lunch. We really yeah. enjoyed the ones we did in the past. We um, sit down with so the these are the one on ones? These are the one on ones. Okay. Well, Where's Vince Busek? Busek? He's done. He's already. The co chairs are meeting with them. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is Heather. I, Hi, I Heather. can see that May 13th one at the Delectable Egg. Okay. Thank you. That's one down. Hey, this is Ryan. I'm having trouble with my phone with this Verizon outage today, but I can do that uh, That May, what's that, the May 4th, 8 a.m., breakfast on Broadway. All right. I'll do the May 10th. May 10th. Okay. Can we do two? Yeah, please. Okay, I'll do the Sadie's on May 9th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 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 Got a couple others down now we we really want two of us to each of these, yeah. right? Correct. Okay. Everyone should try to pick two. Right. Okay. If at all possible. Will you send us this, this? I will. What send status it's in when we're done? Because yeah. I want to wait and see what comes up. I can do May thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do the May 9th, Maybe I want to. Hey, Roger, John Fusa, I'll take the district uh, G1 that uh, in June that still has a date to be determined. So John, your, your June, so what's the right. you want May? May 9th and May 13th. Uh, May 9th and May 13th. Okay. What was the one with Eric Davidson? This is not scheduled. Are, are you putting me down? He's, tra that? he's, he's traveling. Okay. That's a sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Roger, did you stop sharing? I can't seem yeah, to. Yeah, because we'll get this. Sorry. <laughs> We're just trying to do three things at once. So. All right. So. Share it again now. Jim, you said you do Eric when it happens. Ah, uh, yeah. Who else am I missing that told me once? Anyone else? All right, well, I'll send this out because I know it's people need a chance to look at their schedules. And there's something we have to make this meeting. meeting. Yeah. But let's see if we can fill this in. I could potentially do one, but it's got to be one of the early ones. Um, just that I'm out of here. I mean, I could, I'd be delighted to do the one with Marjorie. She's an old friend of mine. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. All right. I'll take it back to you. Yep. All right. And that's uh, the only other thing that I had on uh, the agenda was. Update on the recruitments. You know, we've got five, we'll have five vacancies that will be appointed. The nominating committee, we have 34 applications. The nominating committee is starting to review. That will go to the board at their June meeting, and those folks will join in July. In the June meeting, kind of the last act of the existing committee is to elect a new co chair. Co chairs serve for two years. We elect one each year so that there's some flip flop. Matt will stay on another year. So people should start thinking about if they're interested in, in it. It's not a huge extra time commitment. We have a call uh, once a month to talk about the agenda. Sometimes we have a second call to just touch base on things. And the board is 
you know, looking for a monthly uh, update. So that flip box or whoever's available to do that. Uh, that's pretty much the extra work. Did you did you take a look at the applicants? Did they look like a good group? Yeah. Or? Some some are very good. Good. Well, that's good. <laughs> some you go. Why do you have any interest in this? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's not unusual. Right. But as long as there's some good ones. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and and definitely to everybody here, definitely think about being a co-chair. The way it does work, I got one more year, and then I'm no more co-chair, which is fine. So we kind of rotate that around, and again, it isn't exactly a whole lot of extra work, but um, it does give you a chance to get a little more involved in stuff, which is kind of good, and the board gets to know you a little bit better because you give some updates. Which is also good. May eighteenth, we'll be back on Zoom. Okay. But I, you know, I keep hearing the board is getting very close to going back to in person. Well, I hope it's June. Like July. Like What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what the you know it's it's the fact that it's an old building in the basement, not yeah. really great ventilation. Uh, you know, if they had, if it was, in, if we had a modern, you know, building, at this I, building yeah, would they be back? But we, we met like, upstairs or on the main level. Is there better ventilation up there? Well, there is their meetings versus ours. I think their their thinking is they're not going to have in person meetings in the building of groups if the board is not doing it. So yeah. they're not going to ask the committee to come. You know, they're not if they're not real, correct. Guess. So we will follow once the board's back. That groups like this can meet in the building, but they're not doing these big meetings yet. Well, the goal is, I, I won't be here in May, but the goal is, at least my goal, I'd love to do, well, first I'd love to go back to in person in general, but it'd be really nice in June to thank the members of the committee who are leaving. And then, of course, it'd be a really, a really nice in July to welcome the five new members in person so they can like feel like part of the group, you know, and that this distant amorphous virtual stuff so that would be really good if we could pull it off um, i suppose even if we had to meet here or at your office or something just because of the goings and comings of people especially the new people we'll, we'll see what we can do yeah there's a chance i mean i think there could be a chance that by july the board's back yeah. And the other thing I'll just last thing is, you know, there's a board election coming up. It's, it's, a, it's election year. There's going to be, you know, there's quite a few new, quite a few people that turn out. And there's uh, at least one, Angie, I think, is indicating she's not going to run again. Yeah. So there'll be some opportunities there. Mm -hmm. Any of you are interested in running? <laughs> Any of you run and win? Remember the CAC. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> there you go. Yeah, you, you could be a champion of the CAZ. Um, do you yeah, do you know who's running? Just if you go back to that list off the top of your head. So running for for re-election, yeah. Oh, I don't. I haven't okay. had, I haven't started thinking about it yet. I think most that can will probably run again. Mm -hmm. So separate question, what's the status of your contract? When is it, what, do we know when you'll know? Well, sometimes this month later. Oh, all right, <laughs> well, you know, fair question. I don't know the exact time. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Okay. Well, I think it was a great meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was nice, it was very good it was nice to meet, see people in person. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs>